All right. This is Matt Walden with the RSP Film Room, and I am rubbing my hands together because this week's guest is one of my absolute favorite analysts in this industry. Um, he's a good friend of mine. He's someone who I think works awfully hard and delivers a terrific product every week, week in and week out with Reception Perception and the work that he does at NFL.com and Football Guys, and that's Matt Harmon. Welcome again to our show, Matt. Walden, it's good to be back. You know, all the respect is mutual. You know, we love each other very much. We're we're bros for sure. Uh, and it is it's good to be back in the film room, man. You know, I've been uh, like we were talking before we got on here, man. I, I've been just cranking through the receivers lately. You know, guys are starting to catch on to me, and you know, I'm starting to pick up where I'm at in this receiver class. It's just good to be just watching players again, man. You know, he gets in the in, in the NFL season, it becomes so much of the like weekly shot clock, you know, like, oh, I got this article due this day and I got to pick up some, you know, 10 sleepers out of the air or whatever during fantasy season. So it's great to be back in like draft season and really talk about players again. So I'm, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. And see my kind of people right here, because, you know, the, the folks who get totally jazzed about this time of year where you're doing getting to do all the research and the analysis that's what a lot of folks live for when it comes to writing about this game is getting the chance to really dive in with depth and learn more than what they may even get to share but it aids what it is that they do share eventually down the line and yeah. one of those players that we're going to watch tonight is a i know is a favorite of ours and a favorite of the draft communities. I can't seem to go more than two hours without somebody pumping this guy up on Twitter. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's one Sterling Shepard at Oklahoma. Um, and Matt, I was wondering, you know, I'd like to know why you like Sterling Shepard. What is it about him that has just gotten you excited about his prospects? Sure. So, for those that don't know, you know, I do reception perception where I study every route that a wide receiver runs over for college. I've been doing a six game sample because the season is 13 games long as opposed to eight for an NFL, which is 16 games long. Uh, and it ended up being, you know, nor that normalizes it out pretty well at like six, six games. So uh, all season, I, you know, I work on Saturdays at NFL and we have an all 22 database, which for all the college games, which is pretty tremendous there. So I, that, so that finally opened up the door for me to come do reception perception on college guys. So during the season, I'd go in on Saturdays and I, I wouldn't even watch the games live. You know, I would just pull up all these games and, and just get to work. So around November, you know, and I didn't know any of these other than like Treadwell or, or some of the bigger named guys that I didn't know any of these players very well. And I had never heard of Sterling Shepard. I just saw him on a on a rankings list, and I was like, "All right, today's this guy." So we'll we'll pull him up. And I and I was just like, "Wow!" Like, okay, this is this guy speaks to me. When I just turned like turned on turned on the film and started charting him, and he's just consistently getting open, running really nuanced routes, and you know, I'm sure we'll talk about that and everything. And that's really what that's what gets me first because you know, watching these college guys, and of course, I'm watching NFL guys at the same time. You know, there's just, just such a difference in the refinement. But while I was watching Shepard, I really felt like I was watching an NFL player, like a guy that already knew what to do at, at different points in the route and, and to run a really advanced route tree. So that right away was really what stood out to me. And I, you know, I just put it out there on Twitter. I was like, I think I found my guy, you know, and, and everybody, of course, is trying to guess and all that. And that's always more fun and everything. But yeah, so I mean, he's just a player that he's like, he's my, he's my type of player. I yeah. Think. Yeah, and I, I, I would say that we probably share that in common um, because it's about, you know, the nuance and technique, but there's also a level of, you know, athletic ability and grit to his game yes. that, you, you know, that both appeals to the mind and the emotions when, when you watch him play. And I love that you talked about how he looks more like an NFL player than a lot of college guys do, and I'm going to pull up a book here that, I've referenced before, but if you are someone who's interested in learning about this game, I would highly recommend this book, The Complete Wide Receiver by Jay Norvell. Yes, I would I would echo that. I was one of the first ones I read when I was thinking about making a methodology about wide receivers. <laughs> See, so. there you go. And, and Norvell, if you're not aware, coached Reggie Wayne. He coached Marvin Harrison. He got to coach as much as you would coach a veteran in Tim Brown and Jerry Rice in Oakland. He got a chance to coach a number of excellent pro players um, at the height of their careers. 
And, oh, by the way, he's coached at Oklahoma for a good bit of time. And, you know, he got a chance to get get his hands on Doriel Green Beckham a little bit. And guys like Kenny Stills. And, of course, Sterling Shepard. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're the, – the thing that's interesting is that I mentioned, you know, Kenny Stills, who – has had an okay career. I would say a, a a career that any aspiring prospect would feel good about being able to have that you even made the NFL and that you've had in that you've been on a couple of teams and you've started and you've had some success. Um, but he's by and no one means, that really one that really feels like it's been more derailed by off the field stuff like and not even like he's been in trouble with the law but apparently he and breeze didn't click personality wise the miami staff kind of soured on him quickly so it's not for a lack of ability or or technique or anything like that yeah it may be more it may be more about work ethic it might be more about how he implies himself or how the willingness and you look at you look at that and i think that's the point where i'm getting at here with shepherd shepherd looks like he's maximizing what he's being taught and that he's looking at this as an opportunity to be great under a great teacher. And you don't, and you know, we see that often. If you've ever been, you know, you, there's oftentimes if you've seen some great teachers and you see students who are just like, yeah, whatever, whatever, you know, I know it's a good school, but you know, they, they don't realize where they're really at and who they're really learning from at that point. And I think that Shepard's game reflects a player who's like, I have a golden opportunity here and I am not wasting it. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so we've, you know, we've got a couple games. We've got a few games we could watch. One of them's, I think the first one would probably be good would be Baylor because it's a 2015 game, but there's also the Tennessee game. Um, and I thought maybe we could choose a couple of those unless there's one that you have in mind that we can see that that isn't on draft breakdown. What's I don't know any that aren't I because like I said I'm just watching the film that we have at work. What what what's on draft breakdown again? The Tennessee and the Baylor game. The Tennessee, have, yeah, Tennessee from 2014 and Baylor 2015, and there's a Louisiana Tech 2014 as well. Let's go with the Baylor one. Okay, all right, we'll start with that, and if we have time, maybe you know, if we have time with this, maybe we'll do both. If not, then we will, you know, we'll see where we're at and go from there. Sure. Let's sure. get this thing started. And for those of you who are new to this film room and, and have lasted through our introduction talk show format here that I so so adroitly do, I, I know admittedly I'm just, you know, I'm prime, I'm ready for prime time television. Um, the RV film room is two guys watching tape. And you know, basically, you know, before I even get into this, you know, let me just share with you guys. A little, you know, just a little disclaimer to let you know that the videos posted here at the RSP Film Room um, are not hosted on the um, server, and that the original video content's not considered to be the property of the RSP Film Room. The videos are considered to be used under the Fair Use Doctrine of the United States Copyright Law, Title 17, U.S. Code Sections 107 through 118, and the videos are used on the RSP film room for editorial and educational purposes only and the RSP film room and, and its staff don't claim ownership of any original video content. The RSP film room and staff don't use said video clips in advertisements, marketing for direct financial gain. All the video content in each clip is considered owned by the individual broadcast companies. We're here to just learn and we're looking at cut-ups from Draft Breakdown, which is an awesome site for you to learn on your own um, and for as a repository for us to be able to have this show. So thank you, Draft Breakdown. You guys are flipping awesome for how hard you work to put this to put these video clips together. Because trust me, I watch play by play and I know how long it takes to watch play-by-play -play and write things down play-by-play, -play. and I put videos together with the Boiler Room series, and I know that for you guys to sparse these clips out and put 50, 60 clips back-to-back -back like this takes some time. So thank that you. Ain't easy. Yeah. Yeah. So where are we? Can, we? can you see what I got up here? Yes, I can okay. see. All right. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this uh, set up in a way where we're going to be able to see everything that we need to see. You tell me if it's too choppy or not. 
Um, I'm going to first start at half speed because that usually is a little more successful. I so got we, you. All right. So now we got sharp over here, slot right to start off this 20 personnel shotgun set. It looks like we have a little bit of a wheel route from the slot, maybe thrown back to a comeback. So I like that, you know, for me, I, I like that he comes back to the ball and it seems like he's doing a good job working back to the ball here. Yeah, for sure. Um, that was one thing that uh, in his reception perception sample that I have, which is, like I said, six games, he ran a comeback on 6.6% .6 of his routes, and he was successful on all of them. So he really has a good sense of when to chop back to the quarterback. Yeah, that's nice. You know, and obviously we're not going to get the chance to see this from the all 22 point of view, but you can intuit that he made that decision very well, especially seeing where the location, the defenders were after the fact. And he seems to know where he is on the sideline to, to make sure that even though he's turning towards the ball, that he's got his feet under him and he's sitting down in a chair a bit to make sure that his feet are inbounds. Yeah. And there are a lot of things that you, I, I actually plan on writing about this at some point um, for football guys in the off season about the advantages of watching the TV copy as well. I think you get to see a lot more things like that. Like you get to see right there at that point where the defenders are and how he's are, like, he turns around and has the attitude that he wants to, you know, take the defenders on. He's not like looking to get out of bounds. And of course he does eventually fall out of bounds, but nevertheless, like, that mentality you can catch so much more on a broadcast angle. Yeah, I think you see, I think you see um, release angles and footwork yes. and handwork much better on the broadcast, especially when they show replays, than you do, you know, on the All-22. So, you know, oftentimes when I hear people say, well, you don't have the All-22, or you hear, you know, I'll even hear some analysts who talk up the All-22, but I think that they talked up the All-22 because – Admittedly, it's a savvy business shtick to have to say, hey, I'm yeah. one of the only people who have the all 22, you know. Well, there's but, a mystique to it. Yes. Yeah. You know, and, and there's some definitely, I mean, there are some advantages, like, like, cause I get, cause I get to watch now. There's some advantages, but you know, sure. there, I, I definitely think that, you know, I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't be able to do reception perception without the all 22, but like, nevertheless, seeing the player in his more natural habitat up close on broadcast is there are a lot of advantages to that and should not be understated. Right. They're both valuable and there yes. are some things that they both don't, that one doesn't have that the other does. So agree. Yeah. And that, okay, good. So that, yeah, because I'm not banging <laughs> on you for talking about the all 22. That was not my intent. So, no, but, and, I, and, I, and my intent was not to come in here with like a, oh, by the way. No, I don't know you weren't. You, know. <laughs> you were doing made total sense. I was actually thinking of some other folks. You, I just make funny to your face, just like you do with me. So we're, I agree. we're, yeah, we're, we're <laughs> on the same page. <laughs> we're past that. So, all right. Yeah. Now, this is important because he's outside, and normally he does line up in the slot, and which is one of the big kind of quote-unquote question marks in his scouting report is can he play outside? Because more often than not, he, he runs his routes from the slot. Yeah. What do you think of this? I mean, I don't think it's an exaggerated hop. I actually think it's kind of more of a footwork change. But there is a bit of a, you know, it's kind of more of a jump there. As yeah, it, 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 it feels like he doesn't have as good of balance as he normally does. You can see his head goes a little over his uh, over his 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 uh, decaps there, and I think it's just it's uh, that seems like more of an anomaly from what I'm used to seeing from him than normal. Yeah, and I don't think it's so bad. I mean, like there are some receivers who hop into their stem. Oh yeah, and, Percy and, Harvin never got over that. Yeah, this seems to be like more of just a footwork drill where you switch yeah. your. You switch your hips to orient your direction, and it gives you a little bit of an inside jab move at the same time. So I'm okay with it. It just seems, you know, but I agree with you about the the head over, you know, the head being over a little bit more. Yeah, the, when they hop, you can tell much more than that. I mean, it's it's much more exaggerated. This the full on hop, and a lot of guys do it. Yeah, but I like right away that he's driving. I'd rather see him driving yes. off the line with the with the pads over the knees and trying to, you know, attack early. You want to be aggressive right off the bat, and that's a good start. 
Yeah, so when you know you're going to get pressed, or more likely than not with the corner up there towards the line of scrimmage, you better be in attack mode more than, okay, what is he going to do first? Yeah. So now we got him inside trips. Yeah, back in the slot. Got some off coverage backing off here. Inside shade. Maybe has to be aware of this linebacker too, possibly. Let's see what we have coming up. So Baker Mayfield having to be in escape mode more than anything else. So, all right. A little choppy on my end. I think you might be able to speed it up one one notch. Okay. Better? No, actually, that was worse. Okay. There you go. <laughs> I think it was just this play. Yeah. Because he's just waiting. You know, on this play, everybody goes. And it's just almost purposely, you know, I mean, yeah. we have this we have this slot screen or a little throw out. So we'll move on. Now we got a crossing route. And technically, I can't say I'm like there's anything that's unbelievably impressive about the route that we could see. But what I do like here is that it seems like he has to catch this ball. He tries to, he reaches with his hands. We can't see it from the angle that we'd probably want where it's really clear, but based on his body position, you see his hands about right here. He reaches mm -hmm. for the ball and makes a catch. Now the ball is probably the lat, one of the later windows of arrival for him to make the catch, but I like that he has a hand coordination, to hand-eye coordination to do it. Well, this is definitely an important part of the equation for him because you're going to see a lot of comparisons to, you know, your run-of-the-mill slot receivers like a, you know, like a Julian Edelman or something like that simply because Shepard plays from the slot. But in reality, he makes these sort of catches that, you know, whereas an Edelman needs to really – he needs to body catch. I mean, he, he catches a lot with his body, and it's not necessarily such a bad thing because of the way he gets open in zones, but Shepard is, is very capable of making catches off of his frame. Yeah, and the awareness here to get down is pretty nice. Yes. He, he changes up speeds like in zones, which is important because you can't just go – full speed through a zone because you might run into another zone and and the ability to kind of slow down and, and stop in, in the middle of the field here is important you know and get down and not take the big hit as well is, is also it, that's an important thing if you're going to play from the slot you're going to take a lot of a lot of shots you know yeah. you got to know know when to pick and choose right and he is a tough guy we're definitely i imagine yes. we will see that but he's also selective about when he has to be All right, so now we get him outside again. He's got some inside shade coverage, which is likely going to be single coverage here, especially with the way that the safety's rolled a little to the left, to the left there. And we have more of a smash screen look here. And you know, just some consistent things. He gets himself yes. in position to run after the catch. Got the you know catches the ball with his hands. Quick tuck, yes. you know, people, you, you may think, oh, what's the big deal about tucking the ball quickly? Watch college football and note how many receivers look like they're option quarterbacks for the first five yards after the catch. <laughs> and, then, and then look at them in the preseason in the NFL and notice how many of them fumble the football and never get to see the field again for the rest of the quarter. Yeah. And also that, quickness when you're in getting a screen pass especially how to you catch it with your hands and you quickly tuck it and start running that makes all the difference in getting yards after the catch i've been charting golden tate for an article next week um and he's one of the best 
yards after catch receivers in the game, not just because he's great in the open field, but because he is quick and decisive with everything he does. But catch the ball, get it down, start going. Yeah. Like, he doesn't waste a lot of time. And by the way, Golden Tate is one of the most fun receivers to watch in the league. You know, he's not one of the best or anything, but he just he, he puts a lot of extra things on tape that are fun to watch. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I would, so just a side note, but yeah. No, I agree with you. I mean, Golden Tate was a fun of eval because – when most of the time he body caught everything at Notre Dame, but then every once in a while you'd see plays where he had to extend for the ball and he'd do it. Yeah. He would yeah. do it. Yeah. It's not his biggest strength, but, but the, but the quick, like when on a screen pass or one of those little drag routes or something, he's very good about being decisive. And another, like a slot player, short of short area, guy Jarvis Landry right now is is not at that point yet in his career and he if he could be he'd take his game to another level but so I just think that's an interesting comparison along guy along with guys that are going to Shepard's going to fall in that archetype yeah and we have what I mean some people call this a jerk route I guess I call it a pivot route I don't I'm probably wrong about the terminology of the route but you see it you know a fairly quick break in and out here yeah um, it's not, you know, it's not the best jerk route you're ever going to see here. But what I love again is getting ready to turn up field after the catch. Look how he positions himself. He's turning so that he can get downfield, and he knows the angle. He's, you know, he could have turned the other way and maybe tried to catch the ball over his his right shoulder, um, but he does that, and then maybe the turn. You know, if he keeps it there and just waits for the ball to come he's probably not in position to accelerate as well as if he is facing downfield. Mm -hmm. And when he makes that catch, he's already downfield to accelerate. Definitely. Yeah. Understanding of angles, is definitely a big, definitely a strength of his. I, I like it on that play and, and balance as well. You know, you, we talk about balance a lot with running backs and it's a super important trait for them, but also just in route, not, you know, not losing your footing and everything. And, and when you have to, you know, you're coming inside and then you cut back outside, uh, like on that route. It's it's something that some receivers don't do as well, and it's, it's something that I think is a strength of, of Shepherds. Yeah, and good athletes. I mean, yes. I'm going to give you an example of, of good, bad athlete, and it's on this play I have a feeling. Okay, Sean Oakman is a professional wrestler. I mean, this guy <laughs> is like, he is built from granite, this guy. Yeah. But watch – how look at his feet he's flat-footed i've joked and lance zerline's laughed at this ryan riddle got into giggle fits about this when i we've done the show on him but he looks like he's running with scuba flippers on. and oh wow and, and when you watch him everything stomp 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 flat foot you don't also he has really no bubble for a for a for a tall guy with this type of size so there's not a lot of great change of direction ability here, as you can see. I mean, look at him change direction, and he stumbles, you know, trying to change direction at this point right here, and he doesn't even have the push parts over. Yeah. And he still can't change direction. Meanwhile, let's look over in this corner with Sterling Shepard. You're looking at a guy who's, running with his on the balls of his feet on his toes yep. he's able to bend his hips more and generate that bend to change direction and because he can take those short steps and stay on his toes even when he slips right here because he's on his toes he's able to continue moving forward but sean oakman is is He's that guy in, in your gym that skips leg day. And everybody has that guy in the gym that is, you know, he's, he's rocked up he's, from his, his upper. You can tell he goes in there and, and does all the upper body exercises. And, you know, it looks good with his shirt off. But then you look down at his, he's got these skinny ankles and, and these little wiry legs. And, and you're like, dude, your body wants to be worked out together. Like it wants to be worked out in unison and you achieve your best performance and all all fitness levels when you work your body out in unison but but oakman is that i mean you saw the pictures from the senior bowl especially were very exaggerated of that and it's funny because you're going to get these two guys at the just making this comparison you're going to get these two guys at the combine and oakman is almost certainly going to you know he's going to blow up some of the drills for sure because yeah. you, you, but but when you look at it from a from a play perspective you know i don't know i don't know what Sh Sh shepherd's going to test and it'll actually probably make a big difference in his draft stock but um 
but you can see he he does those things well, like staying on the balls of his feet and you know operating well in in the short areas and everything. And and Oakman just doesn't really have that. It's it's you know it's what makes the difference between a football player and and a and a and a, and a tester. Yeah, and and so when someone says fluid athlete, Sean Oakman is not a fluid athlete. No, no, exactly. But Sterling Shepard's a fluid athlete. Heinz Ward was slow, but he was a fluid athlete. You know, yes, that's that's kind of what we're looking at here. All right, so we're not seeing any big runs in this game thus far early. But we are seeing that consistent, how do I position myself to catch the ball and get downfield? Yes, and of the routes that, that he ran most often, the curl route, kind of that quick hitch, was the one he scored the best on in reception perception. So again, this is what you – this is what – he's going to do in the NFL is he's going to present that quick, you know, reliable target to a quarterback. Yeah. He's going to be an and, extension. And that sort of thing right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And this is a zone. And those play. guys are in this. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, they, they, you know, these are very valuable, but yeah, zone. Yeah. You see the zone coverage and knows where to stop and, and makes the first defender miss, which is also nice. Yeah. All right, now this is this yeah. is the thing that got you and I get excited about right here. Let's see if we can, and I'm sure they will show a replay. Play, so I'm not going to go too crazy, but right off the line of scrimmage, selling the vertical route. He knows he's got single coverage here with inside shade, and he's selling it well. And look, the width of the steps. This is yeah. something that I've been talking. I talked about the past couple of days with Braxton Miller, who's a quarterback learning to play wide receiver. Very talented, mm -hmm. very talented physically. Extremely. Yes, but when you watch him in his first few games, which you know, and even at the Senior Bowl at times, much choppier steps. He's much more tentative. He doesn't have that lean like this, where he's like saying, "I'm attacking you with my speed." It's more like. Small choppy steps, like he's like he's a running back on a zone play. You know, slow to the yeah. hole and fast through it, rather than the with a receiver. It's the opposite. It's like you gotta you gotta be really aggressive off the ball like this, and that gets the defender turning and running right away. Well, and and um, one thing I will say about just Miller is a great example of it because. Because it's what he's a very exaggerated example of this because he's coming from a position change. But there are some guys you see run routes like they're trying to make a defender miss in the open field, and they think that's how they're going to deceive the cornerback in the same way. But it's a very much a different skill to, to deceive a defender in a route and set him up in a route is very different from setting them up in the open field. And you can still see Miller, again, an exaggerated example because of the position change. But you see he does that. And and it looks good in, like, in the vines from the senior bowl practices. But when you watch it, like, in, in a game, you can see the differences there. Oh, absolutely. And it's, you know, when you watch this, you know, at the end of this play, we'll even talk about that. Obviously, we'll see in between here at some point what happens, I, I think, in the free play, that why he has – almost two yards of separation, but watch how he, as he veers outside the numbers with the ball in the air, you're going to see this little bit of veer outside the numbers, but he doesn't get too far to the sideline. He stays straight. He, he starts making more of a straighter path for the next five yards. And then the final five yards, he veers further to the outside at the very end. Yeah. And that's, that's that very important trait of separating horizontally from the defender at the end. That is yeah. that, and it also just gives, though the ball's already in the air here, the fact that he didn't cling to the sideline gave the quarterback more room for error to throw this ball. Well, and it's, it makes it not a contested catch. You know, he it's now he doesn't have to go up and fight for the ball. He gives more room for the ball to come right to him instead of the defender being able to contest it, which is important for a, a smaller player. Yep. 
And if you're wondering about Baker Mayfield's ability to throw the ball with um, a level of distance, you know, maybe not velocity, but distance, we're talking about, oh, let's see, from the 39, from the 49 to the five. Yeah. So, you know, we're looking at about a 43, 44 yard throw. Nice awareness there to get get to the pylon. Let's see if they do. They give them the score there. Yes, they do. After Shepard does a little lobbying, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but here's the route. And you know you get to see the chop move here. It's the thing that people underestimate is that you want to attack well enough and be downhill enough that when you use this chop move, it's a timely use of it. It's not just because you did it because you were drilled to. When he uses this, it's functional. It's not just, yeah. oh, yeah, I tried it and it didn't work because you see that a ton. So when you see people reviewing receivers and they say he can get off the jam, getting off the or he can use his hands to get off the jam, if he doesn't make the contact where he's supposed to make it and he doesn't foil that contact from happening, then he wasn't effective with using his hands. Yeah, that's a great demonstration of that for sure. Yeah. I, I, I really like that. And again, just, you know, these, these smaller, minor, you know, not minor, but nuanced technical things that we're looking at here is, is what makes him such an interesting prospect to me that that level of refinement that you don't, you don't often see from a, from a, from a big 12 receiver, or big 10 receiver or whatever, whatever the conference is. This is yeah. no, the, it's a big 12. I don't even know. Yeah. Even know whatever it is nowadays, <laughs> but the, you know, the Oklahoma, Texas conference, you know, but the, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know, I know there are a lot of you out there probably not happy about hearing that, but anyway, yeah, that was I discussed no disrespect, man. But uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I, I know I feel the same way as you, and I'm sure they're all like, "Yeah, we don't know either. We can't keep up with it all." But uh, but seriously, I mean, you look at this play, and you're talking about a slot receiver getting two yards of separation on a corner or a, or a slot DB, and he only slows down because he has to wait on the ball. Right, and again, he's using the boundary which is the thing you know he's using the sideline and, and this is what you need to see from a guy that you're projecting that's plays in the slot in college can he play in the outside play on the outside in the nfl this is a good sign right here that that yes you know even if it's just in spades he can do it yeah and nuance this new one this nuance is great watch right here where he's got his shoulder open to the corner as he's waiting on the ball as the ball arrives, close, closed it up. Yep. yep. These little things really do make a difference. I love the point you made, Matt, about how, um, you know, it, certain routes look great on, you know, in practice or are fun because they make an open field move. And some wide receivers think getting open is about making some fancy move that works on the playground. Um, yeah. But in the NFL, it really is about – a much more minimal type of movement, a much yeah. more disguised type of movement. It's much more about straight lines and sp and maximizing your speed. And, you know, when you get to tell a story, you, you know, N Marvin Jones is a nuanced tell storyteller, but you'll notice that he does it oftentimes with that straight line, minimalist type of thing. <sighs> Absolutely. Yeah. That's a, he's a good example of that. And it's just, it's, you know, because if you're going to do that stuff, like you have to be way quicker and more agile than your opponent. And that's just not going to happen, you know, 90% of the time in the NFL, you know, even to get that 10% of the time is, is, is a, is a fortunate thing. Even if you're a high end athlete, like a Braxton Miller, you, you have to learn to, to disguise things more than just try to make people miss. For sure. And there's a nice crossing route. You like the setup here. This is where you're telling the story against a little bit of off coverage is nice because the defender's playing inside shade here, not giving yeah. up the inside. But watch the head fake, shoulder fake to the to the Yeah, outside. that's 
mean, that's 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 artwork right there, man. Getting off the getting off the line like that, being able to use the head fake, you know, because like you said, he's shading inside. He's prepared to play the inside route, and and Shepard Dick. This is a, oh, I always love to see a receiver that dictates the terms of the route to the defender, and that's what Sh- Shepard does here. You know, the corner is is prepared to play the inside. He's he's defending for the inside. But Shepard takes him outside, then comes back inside, and, and he is the he is the dictator of how this is going, how this this play is going to go. Absolutely, you know. And look at even like look at the bend of the hips because corners are taught to look at the hips. You know where yep. the hips go is where they're supposed to go. And so when you get a player who's ready to break down, oops, and bend his hips like this, bam. That's that's going to drive you outside. And he's essentially widened the path for himself. And now we get a chance to see him do a little work. And that's good. That's admirable work as a runner after the catch. Yeah, he's not going to be the type of player, I think, that, you know, breaks – a ton of tackles. I don't think he's. I don't think he's that type of guy after the catch. But I think he uses space well, finds the openings and in, in in the defense and 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 makes makes more of his. He's going to get more of his yards after catch that way than as opposed to making guys miss in the open field. And that should tell you a lot about the type of passing system he should be in. You know, be, because you're not looking for him to be the I'm going to break tackle playmaker type of guy who rebounds the ball um, when you throw it up for grabs, he's going to be the timing route offensive player who, if you throw it to him in stride, he is going to maximize what you give for what you deliver for him. So let's see what happens on this play. Let's see if they show, well, this is the only angle we're going to get of it. So let's watch it here. Got an out route that's jumped pretty much, you know, pretty well here but i do think you know shepherd came back to the ball um maybe he could have come back a little more but at the same time i think this is a better play from number 48 than it is a a play lacking from number three yeah, it'd be great to see it from a different angle but for sure i don't i don't know that there was anything very alarming there yeah and I agree, because, I mean, we don't get a chance to really see the break here. But uh, moving onward. Now, this is a this is an underrated play, because we're looking at a zone coverage, and we've got him on the outside. And he's got two players he has to contend with, so he has to understand how he's going to angle his break to maximize this for the throw. Because he's got the safety over top, and he has the inside corner in the slot. Mm-hmm. And he could have broken this a little further downfield and ended up being taken on by the safety. But he breaks it just sharp enough that he's still got good distance from the shallow corner. But he's still you know, well under the safety here. And that's about understanding your break points. Yeah, for sure. That's That's – Again, what I think his biggest strength is, is 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 understanding where he needs to cut and and where he is on the field in relation to the defense and everything. So I think again, that's a really good example of you know just a, what would see what seems just a routine you know passing play, and it really is, but that just shows what he's good at. Yeah, and there's a little more with him that I think that we will probably see, and you know that you'll see in other versions of tape if we don't get to catch it tonight. But there are some plays that you get to see that are more of your, ooh, wow, kind of yeah. plays. He, he does – he is capable of those. He's capable of those clutch, crunch time type of plays. But this is one of those plays that the big ooh, wow players often don't make. Devontae yeah. Adams is a good example of a player who probably needs some time – has needed some time to develop in, in this – realm jordy nelson needed some time to become a better player in this realm with aaron Rodgers. the fact that we're already seeing this from shepherd is pretty nice 
I would say if you're looking for wow plays from Shepard, check out the TCU game if you get the chance. That's probably the one that, in if my recollection serves me right, is the most wow tape of his. Very nice. I'm, I actually have more to watch of Shepard. I've watched a few games. I haven't seen that one yet, so I'm going to check that one out. Yeah, it's a fun one. All right, so... Moving forward, now we've got a little red zone play, and he's good in the red zone. I agree. Another chop move. Yep. See if we can find it here. Here we go. Nice release off the line. Breaks early enough so that when – look at the – he knows the distance of his breaks. Most receivers at this stage really just don't know how to attack with their hands and when. Because he doesn't get so close that when he chops that the defender can just ride him inside and like hold on to him even through the chop. But he's far but he's not so far away that the chop doesn't have an effect. He gets his hands and scoops it out under there so that the defender's hand you know, the defender loses any chance to really get a grip. Even though he, I would say that the contact he makes is after the hand goes all the way around and towards the back. It's enough. And again, you see, you know that this is the cor the corner is playing the inside route. He's more shaded inside than Shepard is, and again, dictating the terms of the route. And that's that's why you that's why you come up with this this route, yeah. which is really nice. And I like that there's no, like, you know, sometimes it's nice to do some really fancy stuff at the top of your stem, but he's yeah. not stuttering at the top of the stem. He just takes one step. He looks to the outside enough to freeze the defender, and he turns and chops. Well, he's not wasting. You know, you hear that a lot with receivers. Like, he wait, he doesn't waste any motion, and that's something that Shepard does very well. He, he doesn't do anything extra. He does just enough what needs to be done to create separation, to create the hole for himself in this play, you know, get into the end zone here. Um, and again, it, I feel like it's really not fair to compare what I think is the best route runner into, in, in the class, but I keep making the comparison like with Braxton Miller, again, like from the rawest of raw perspective of running routes, like you see that with Miller a lot. He wastes a lot of motion in routes. And again, I, like I said, it's not a fair comparison, so I, I really probably shouldn't be making it, but but that's something that you see with a lot of college receivers is they try to do too much. You know, like you said, they don't really have an understanding of 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 the where they are on the field, what they need to do in relation to the defense and everything. But I think you get a great view of that here with Shepard. Like he just does the fakes to the outside, chops inside, you know, and there's that. Yeah. And you know, I mean it's one of those things where you also have to understand that all that movement can tip off a route to a defender. Yes. And oh, yeah, exactly. That's really the fundamental thing to the, what we're alluding to here is that that streamlined movement prevents you from tipping off things. It's like playing poker. You don't want to give off a lot of tells as a wide receiver. Um, this particular play, he traps the ball. He tries to use the correct technique here. He's got his hands out underneath on a low throw. Um, the ball ends up bouncing off his chest first, but, or off his stomach first. But, you know, the fact that the process is good and the result is good, that's fine, you know. it's yeah. You're not always going to get it. In, it's not always going to hit you in the hands. But if you are using the technique that maximizes the opportunity to do so, I'm not going to ding a guy for that. And that's a tight window throw, too. I mean, it, just as far as, like, even after gaining the leverage on the route, the corner still has pretty good position. Number 48 or whatever. I don't know if he's a corner yeah. or not, but, like, or 18 in this, in, this, in this sense. He still has a pretty good position. Like, if the throw is a little, you know, if there's a little less velocity on it, he still has a, the potential to make a play on the ball. So it's not like I, – I don't know if you can worry about – making the cleanest looking catch in that scenario, you know, you're trying to score here. Just get, just get it done. Yeah. This is a nice start. You see, then you see in, in addition to the chop move, he knows how to reduce the shoulder. See how he turns that elbow inside 
and gets under number 48's push so that he doesn't get tied up by him. And we didn't get to see the whole thing of it, but you see the hint of him faking inside and even turning his head back to the inside before he breaks to the outside. So there's this post-corner type of look that's overthrown or on, you know, but that's okay. See a little bit of a storytelling there that's clean and fluid. Cool screen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what we got going on here. All right, now. Middle trips. And we're going to get a chance to see them, you know, work from that crossing route and try and work downfield. But again, he's not targeted there. But you saw, you saw midway through this route, him trying to work downfield and become a, a bigger target and settle in, under this zone. Right. But the quarterback goes elsewhere. And that's a smart play because the quarterback would have had to throw it across his body. No, yeah, that would have been a mistake if, if he had thrown across the defense like that. Yeah. Now we get the little corner. We get the deep out, actually, or a corner. It looks more like a – what is that? What do you think that is? I have to see it. Let me see it again. All right. As much as we can. Yeah. I would probably, and again, I, I can't, you can't see it from the complete angle or anything, but I would probably, I would guess that's more of an out route because he stabilizes more than he's coming at an angle. So I would say that's probably more of an out than a corner route, but I could be wrong again, just from the angle here, but I, I think I agree with you on that, that that's more of an out route. It's a nice, and I, I, I'll tell you what the receivers. Well, here we go here. We might see a little bit better this way. Yeah. See, I think he stabilizes right around that 20 or the 15 yard line. So I would, I would probably, again, still don't know for sure, but I would probably say that's an out route. Yeah. It's a little choppy around the break point, so I can't really. I can't. I could again be wrong, but no, but the, the running the out route is that's probably I if I remember correctly from my work last year on reception perception. I think that other than obviously running nine routes, you know, which are just inherently going to be harder to get open on because it's a deep route and whatever you, you get the point but i think out routes or i think were the hard, other one like it was the lowest scoring you know success rate because there's a lot that goes into running a clean out route and if you can do that as a receiver you can really help your offense pick up a lot of chunk plays you know you have to have a good quarterback to throw the deep out and all that sort of stuff but if you can get a receiver that can that can run a good out route that's important for an offense. Antonio Brown's a great example of a guy that runs a, a great out route, and we know he's one of the best route runners, you know, receivers in the league. Yeah, Roddy White used to dominate as an out route runner. Yeah. Now, now you know why he's no longer a R.I.P. Roddy. Yeah. Yeah. What a great, what a great receiver in that technical range when he was at the top of his game. And again, you know, multiple moves. You can make the first man miss. He does a nice job in his zone coverage to make the tough catch. He shields the defender well. See him duck through the wrap. Get downhill. And, you know, it doesn't turn into a big play, but it's a nice play. And it's a, it's a big play in the scheme of third and six. So certainly, certainly good stuff on that play. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, these those sort of routine plays they are going to be a big, going to be a big part of his game, you know, as as a potential slot receiver and everything like that. Yeah, absolutely. So, what do you say? Do you want to do one more, or do you want to? Where where, where are you at? 
Well, we can do. I mean, we could definitely do another game. But are we going to do the other player that we that we I, talked about? I think maybe we should because I think we've seen enough of Shepard that yeah. shows you that he's technically sound. You know, and people and people know about Shepard. They kind of know, or at least I feel like it. You know, a lot like a lot of people are going to tell you about Shepard. It, it appears that a lot of people are going to want to be on that train. This guy, the other guy that we wanted to look, and you already tweeted about it too. So if it happens, if you say it on Twitter, that means it's fact. Yeah, so let's do it. So <laughs> what we'll do is we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to end this episode, and we'll come back and do our next episode on Kenny Lawler.